So thanks to the kids, I've got lots and lots of aluminium cans, cola cans, beer cans, that sort of thing. And I want to smelt them down in a little foundry that I'm going to make. So here we go. So if it's your first time here and you want to learn how to make stoves, waste oil burners, and we're going to make a foundry today and lots and lots of other DIY projects, you could start now by subscribing. That'd be great. And click on the bell notification so you don't miss anything. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to reuse this propane bottle. It's a, it's a fine little bottle. It's got a bit of damage to it. It'll never be used again and I need to make sure there's no gas in it. This one has a needle type valve in it that I can press and let's see. Okay, so there's nothing in this one. I can press the valve down like a Schrader valve on a car. You know, I can press it down. There's no gas coming out of this, but that doesn't mean it's, ex it's not explosive. So what I got to do is I got to cut this off um, so I can get at the valve, put a lever on the valve, open it. Uh, when I have that off then, I'm going to fill it with water to, to purge it, you know, get any residual gases out of it. I don't want any bangs or explosions when I'm working on this. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to cut the top off it. That essentially gives me um, like a, a basin or a, 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 pa a pot, something like that. And uh, that's going to be the basis of this particular foundry project. So, okay, let's get started. Now, one of the reasons the shed door is open is because I want to send the sparks out through the door. I don't want to send the sparks in here. I'm going to cut it off with a, a nine inch angle grinder and I'm just going to use these two bricks to stop it rolling around the place while I chop it. Okay. So just to be clear, I'm not cutting the valve off. I'm just cutting that collar off so I can get to the valve. Uh, if I was to cut the valve off, <laughs> this will be a short video. Here we go again. We'll get this off in a couple of minutes. That's it. So that's it off, no effort. You know, you got to make sure that when you're cutting this, you're not cutting into the bottle. Okay, so the next thing to do now is to take this valve off it. And again, I can't stress it, you've got to make sure there's no gas in it. Okay, so there's lots of ways of getting these out. It's actually not that hard to do. But you need some tools. Pipe wrench on the rim. Bring it around till it locks in position. Just hold it there with your foot. Get your pipe wrench, second one. And in this case, I put, you know, maybe two feet of pipe on it, 30 inches of pipe, and push. That's it, they're standard left hand thread or right hand thread. Same as a Coke bottle or something like that. So what I'll do with this one is I'll fill it with water. And then, um, you know, that's all the gas out of it, maybe leave it there for a few minutes or something with the water in it get the water back out just turn it upside down and uh, and chop it now you will smell gas as long as you don't hear gas and you know that's got a an air gas mixture in there you make some sparks with there there would be some very interesting times you know that you don't want to explore so that's it look we're going to fill this with water and move it to the next stage now to speed things up a little bit i've already filled this with water and emptied it so we're ready to cut the propane tank now I've marked a black line all the way around the top and I'm going to cut it at that position. Okay, here we go. Now I have the shed door open just so I can throw the majority of the sparks that way and not all over the shed. So no surprise, it's raining here today. It's very cold, about three degrees centigrade. Um, and these are full of water because I had them outside. So there's one of my little burners. This works great. You can check out up here if you want to see how I made it. Um, this one's going to fit in here beautifully. All I need to do now is to run in an air supply through the side of the propane bottle and a drip feed oil system, you know, drip, feed pipe, drip feed pipe into that as well. And uh, that would be great. Here's the one I did most recently, or at least I had it in one of my recent videos. It's essentially a top hat with some slots in it. And again, this is a forced air type. I might have to drill a pilot hole just to get this thing started so it doesn't dance all over the place on me. So I've got a bit of cutting foam and I'll use some of that just to make it easier for the drill bit to get through or for the hole saw to get through. Now as you can see I went down near the base. That's deliberate. I want to be able to use the pipe down close to the bottom to use up as little room inside the propane bottle as possible. Now, if this was too small, I could always cut another one, put it on top and weld it, and that would do great. Um, you know, there's other ways of doing this. If you've got loads of pipe and stuff like that, you know, maybe 12 or 14 inch diameter pipe knocking around, you know, you could use some of this. But uh, great to be able to use some of the stuff we have around. 
So I've moved this on a little bit. Here we go. We've got the top taken off it, you know, so now I've got more or less uh, a bucket, if you like, um, but a steel bucket. I put a hole in the base of it, just one hole. So I have a hole in, and that's for my air intake. Um, I'll show you that. Now, I've moved the air intake on a bit. It looks a bit more complicated than it did, but it's the same thing. Essentially, forget the brackets on it. It's just a pipe with an elbow on it that shoots up. So I bring in the air horizontal, the air goes in, and it changes direction and goes up. That's all that is. The rest of it is easy. This is just a leg. So I've measured down from here to the base part of the, the propane tank, and I just want this thing to sit level. So I made a little stand, so it just pushes it up. That's what that's for, it's just a leg. This plate on top, that's an easy one as well. So here's one of my waste oil burners. Okay, so that's it there with the holes in it and a little V in the front of it. That's just for the, uh, the oil line in. So what I wanted to do is so I could use um, any of my burners, you know, or any that are this design at least, that I could just drop them on. And that's it. You know, I can fit it inside there as quick as that. That's one on, one type. And this is the second type. And it just literally goes over the top of it. And this particular burner gets a second part. And that's it. I can make a waste oil burner as quick as that. So, that's the top hat part of this one. That's the burner of this one. Now, this is the, you know, the bit that connects the burner up to the airline. So it's very easy, just a bit of scaffolding bar, two inch pipe, um, maybe four inches of flat plate across the top of it. And that's just as a landing platform for the base of the oil burners. And this vertical piece here is just a leg, okay? And I've designed it in such a way that I can just drop it in. And that's it, it's in position. So, and then, I'll show you this in a second, but then all I have to do is with my burner, I won't say I want to light this thing up, just drop, clean my burner out, drop it on, light it. I still have to set up the oil feed, but I'll do that shortly. So that's it. I'll show you the setup. So there's my propane tank. You're looking straight into it. Here's my, you know, mad assembly. And I just literally set it up like that. Now it's in a central position at that. Here's one of my burners. And say I want that to work, I just drop it over the pipe. And that's it. And we're just gonna light that now. So I have to decide where I want to bring in the oil feed. And I'll bring the oil feed probably the same place as the airline feed. So I'll just, I'll bring in the oil feed about here. So I'm gonna drill a hole there and that's the oil line sorted out. But just to show you, that's one burner out. And say I want to try a different design. Here's my other one. Drop that in. Put it on the, now I, I put um, spacers in there just to kind of fill up the gap, but I don't need them anymore because I changed design. And I just put this top hat in on top. And that's it, one waste oil burner, foundry. Now I might have to extend this on up a bit, but no problem. And I can clean it out and change burners as quickly as that. So there you go, this is a very, very simple setup. We've got a drip feed system, um, and I have videos on how to make a drip feed system. If you want to click here, I'll put a link up here for that. Okay, so drip feed system out of the way. Um, essentially, we're gonna drip oil down into this and it's gonna go into my burner setup. And again, I have videos on how to make these burners. <laughs> I link it up here as well. So, okay, here's the burner. Okay, it's a very, very simple setup. Essentially, what I do is I blow air into the bottom of this burner. The air comes out and goes straight up and do no work for me. But to make it go horizontal and keep the burn within this chamber, what I did was I came up with this. And this is my own setup and you can see videos you know in my playlist on this but essentially it's just a kind of a, a stop end with some slots okay and that just goes on there that forces any air that i send up this way to come out sideways into the burn chamber and it's very very you know very very simple very effective um, but really easy to make essentially i made that whole thing out of flat steel you know i cut a circle and then i cut a strip i rounded the strip and stitched it all together you know welded it together okay so this is the setup this is my air feed. As I said, it looks more complicated than it really is. The white material on the top of it, that's the air feed in. The white material on the top is just uh, some fiberboard. And it's just to help seal the bottom of the, the oil burner setup. Just to help seal that when, the, when this sits on it. So this goes in. Now I'm trying to do this one-handed. So I'm just gonna push that in a little bit. And that's it, you can see it's in. So I'm just gonna center that. There we go. 
Now you can see the oil feed in. This is oil in and it's just going to drip into the bowl here. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to ignite all the oil that's in that bowl. Now to get it concentrated, you know, so it doesn't just burn dirty, we're going to blow air up the center hole and we're going to change its direction with this thing. Okay, so there we go. That's it. Now when I get it going, I'm going to put this on it and you can see these screws. These are just to stop the disc falling down. So I've got about three inches. When I drop this down, I've got about three inches between the bottom of the top hat and this. And what I want to happen is for the flame to come up, hit this, and its only escape route is to come up through the center of this and it'll focus the flame in the middle. Now that's the plan. Right, let's get this going. So, you know, I generally start these things with some kerosene. Um, kerosene is a bit like diesel, you know, if you can't get it in the States, but diesel will work just as well. I don't use gasoline, it's, it's too, uh, too flammable. So I'm just going to squirt some of this in here. That's it. We've got our kerosene in there. I've got a fire lighter. These are just flammable. You could put anything in here you want. Turbo torch would be better. Okay, so there we've got a bit of a flame on the go. Okay, so the kerosene is boring. The oil hasn't gotten around to it yet. I haven't connected the air yet. Okay, so it's beginning to go. What we're looking to happen now is we're looking for the oil to take. So let's put our disc in. Everything gets red in there. That's what, this sounds pretty good. So this bowl on top is just the top of the propane tank. And you can see it's absolutely hammered with heat, which is great. If I give it more air, if I put a compressor line on it, all that sort of stuff, I can make it better. But as a prototype, I mean, the heat's getting me here and I'm worried for my bushes. But um, yeah, it's working really well. Now that's it, there's a very basic smelter. We've got a drip feed oil system. I've added a bit of pressurized air just to stop it backfilling with smoke. And we're making an absolute ton of heat. I can melt aluminum cans in that all day long, no problem. Uh, I've already melted four. I only had four to hand at the moment and uh, they just disappeared pretty quick. So I'm gonna leave it there for now at the moment. If you're already a subscriber here, thanks very much, you're absolute legends. If you haven't subscribed already, maybe you'd click down there, that'd be fantastic. Look, if you wanna see something recommended by YouTube, you can click up here. If you wanna see something from my playlist connected with these waste oil burners, you can click down here. And that's it. Good luck. See you in the next video. Bye for now.